Hello and welcome to a new series in the Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. So, what are we going to be doing? We are going to be playing a very different kind of campaign. We're going to be playing a campaign where instead of plotting and murdering our way to the top, or instead of trying to get our personal, um, you know, glory up there or whatever, we're going to be working as a good vassal should for their liege. We're going to be very specifically trying to help our liege succeed and we'll see how things go from there. There's always the chance our liege gives us more power, gives us more land. There's also a chance our liege disappears and then everything falls apart and we'll need to adjust. But that is the plan. So, who are we going to be playing? Well, we are going to be playing Master Jory Cassell. Now, why are we playing him? Well, basically, the Cassell seemed like the obvious choice. First of all, they're in the north, so the north is naturally separated from the rest of the Seven Kingdoms. It is naturally kind of, everyone in the north will support the ruler of the north, right? So it set, made sense that if we're going to be supporting our liege, we should be up here in the north because that way it gives us a good reason not to be supporting the liege above it. Another reason for the Cassells is that they actually do this in in the books in the uh, in the show so jory cassell turn, goes on to be the captain of the guards at winterfell while his uncle sir roderick who is right now our heir goes on to be master of arms at winterfell so right now we're playing as a character who is well he is a supporter of his liege until the very end unfortunately for jory so, we're going to try and do things a little bit better than Jory did uh, in the books, and we'll see how things go. Now, our father is dead. This is the situation for us right now. Our father was killed in personal combat by a member of the King's Guard. By a member of... Uh, I have a note here. Uh, sorry. He was killed at Tower of the Joy in the Red Mountains of Dorne during a battle with three members of Ares II Targaryen's King's Guard. So, his father dead and well his brothers all did not live to uh well to adulthood so he has no family in this particular branch he does however have an uncle who also had many many children die and he has what well, and we have one cousin and he has one daughter and that's pretty much our entire family if we go and look three living members that's it not a lot so first things first i think we should marry and i have some ideas about marriage as well we're going to try and play with a few restrictions just to see how the game plays out. And one of the restrictions I was thinking of here is we're only going to be marrying at least within one rank of ourselves. We're not going to try and push up too much and we're only going to marry within the north, Fortress Now. And we'll see how that actually plays out and how, whether that works out for us. But basically what I want to do is say uh, one by one rank, I mean one rank above. So we're not going to marry any lowborn people unless we have a particular reason to. So if we're humble, perhaps I'll do that then. But we're not humble. So let's go and find ourselves a wife. It seems like that should be priority number one. Uh, do we have the ambition to find a wife? Yes. That is priority one, number one right now because we need, um, well, more heirs, basically. So looking for characters. Uh, what we can probably do is just uh, filter by Northmen. That would probably do it. So if I go north... Uh, oh, can we not do that? I can type in North, but not North Man. Okay, well, that's not going to work then. Um, we can search the realm. That'll work as well, pretty much. So anyone who's in our realm. Uh, we probably want them to be my religion group, because otherwise they'll say no. Uh, my culture group as well. Actually, that would probably do it by itself. If we just go my culture group. Uh, gender woman. Uh, in prison, can't be in prison, can't already be married. That would probably put a spanner in the works there. Um, they can be a ruler. I'm not worried about them being a ruler. They have to be in Diplo range, obviously. And that's about it. We do want them to be an adult because we actually want to marry. Like right now. Let's have a look. Uh, let's go from a youngest to oldest. And just see who we've got. See whether anybody stands out to us. So, we have Teresa here. She is lowborn. Is there, oh yeah, if I go Great House, yes. I see Great House not mine. That's probably the best way to do it. But now we're only searching uh, people who actually have interest. And they also don't have a house. Huh. Okay. Well, that's fine then. 
I thought uh, hitting Great House might actually work, but I guess not. If I go for a yes, does that change the list? Yes, it does. Weird. Okay. So we have Arya uh, Bowl. Uh, she seems fine. She's the granddaughter of Lord Hugo of Kingsgrove. Okay. Seems like a reasonable choice, but she's a bit proud, greedy, shy. We'll avoid her. Uh, we have Daisy here. Uh, Daisy uh, Mormont. Okay. She is the granddaughter of L Lord Bjorn. Bjorn? Uh, Mormont. Okay. That one seems reasonable. Uh, she is strong, attractive, proud, brave, and kind. And content. No, she seems fine. She seems like a good choice. I, I don't think we're going to spend too much more time on it. We will marry her if she will have us. Uh, yes, we get some prestige from marrying into House Mormont. But, yeah. Fairly good match for ourselves. Right. Next thing, we need to choose a focus. What are we thinking? What is our focus? So we're 19, and right now, um, the like bootmark we're starting on is the Greyjoy Rebellion. So the Greyjoys have just risen up against King Robert. So, um, I think war is probably gonna that that would stand out to me. We want to we would be the candidate. We're 19. We want to go out. We want to battle. We want to be on the front lines. That, that seems like the kind of character we want to be. So we're going to go for a war focus. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Uh, we need to set our council. We're married. We have minor titles. And we have idle council members. That's fine. Right. So. Um, I'm not going to change anyone just yet. I'm also going to avoid just changing people on the council randomly. I'm going to try and stick with it. We're going to try and make people like us. So we don't have a maester right now. Uh, oh no we do. We don't have a priest right now. Okay. Our maester, we just need to tell him to serve court. Spy master, he can scheme, that's fine. Although we could build a spy network. Uh, probably in Winterfell, that would work. But scheming would also help. Um, yeah, let's build a spy network in Winterfell right now. In the supporting our leash thing, that kind of fits. Uh, King's Course, by the way, is our only province. It's not very big. But Wayfarer's Watch is the one that we have. Really not too much else. So, uh, let's uh, put in a designated read. Well, sorry, uh, let's go back to the council. Let's continue putting in jobs. So, I think we're going to have this guy collect taxes. We probably want to train troops up in case we're going to go to uh, war. And what else do we want to do? We can prove diplomatic relations with our liege. That seems pretty good. And then here, oversee realm, prove defenses, pacify province, or improve holdings. Uh, let's get him to oversee the realm for just now. See how that goes. Alright, we need a designated regent. I reckon that should be a member of our... That should be Sir Roderick, if he is in our lands, which he's not. He's in Spearmouth, which is down here. Okay. Which is part of another duchy of the Barrow lands. Okay. So, he can't be our regent. Who else have we got? We got any friends? No, we have one vassal. Master Tomard, who is our Castell or our Castellan, he seems like a good choice. Yes. Right. Uh, that's pretty much everyone. Everyone is a loyalist right now, apart from our spy master, who for some reason isn't. He's a bit ruthless, rude, ambitious. Alright, so typical spy master. Right, succession, agnatic uh, primogenitor. Kind of expecting that. Very straightforward. We have no laws that we can put into place, we just inherit everything from the north. We can change some taxes if we want to, and the council is empowered but has no real control right now. Interesting. I didn't notice that, um, like in the base game, you have all these options. So for the council, you have uh, like every single law, and this one's just diplomacy, titles and offices, and justice. Okay, interesting. Uh, we don't have that many men. That's all right. And can we send for a maester? What do we need to do? We must not have any... Oh, we already have a maester. I was meaning priest. Um, I don't see any priest one here, but I might be blind. That's absolutely fine if I am. Uh, oh, we employ a new uh, courtier. Yes, let's get ourselves a priest. Yes, so we lose some piety. And we lose some gold. And then we get a learned person named Halus. Okay. Halus has arrived at our court. He is a theologian. He's selfish, um, but he, you know, he's fun to chat to, but he is very zealous. Seems good. Yeah. 
I'm going to give you the title of priest. Right. That seems fine. Anything else that we need to do before we start? Uh, I don't think so. Apart from maybe join a um, faction. So liege loyalists, obviously. That's the right one. Yep, just double checking. And then society. So there anyone want to join? We're probably, we're not really an alchemist. We'll leave that for later. Right. I think we're going to unpause and see whether our marriage went through. Oh, what we should also do is I'm just going to set uh, our liege to special interest, who is, of course, Eddard Stark with his four children, Rob, John, Sansa, and Arya. Right. The realm is in a state of war. The Iron Throne is embroiled in a great conflict. I've committed my loyalty to my liege lord, uh, Lord Paramount, Eddard Stark, and... So I'm honor bound to follow him. We shall prevail. So he is supporting the throne, and we are back to him now. Okay. Oh, we need we can set a sworn shield. So that's a bodyguard. Okay, the master my master of arms. Makes sense. That seems fine. Okay, let's so unpause, let things continue to roll. Right, speed it up a little bit. And there we go. We have married. We have a wife, at Daisy. Fantastic. Right. Uh, oh, we can set another sworn shield. Um, I don't think that she makes the... She's probably not the best choice for um, a bodyguard, but we could put her in here. That seems fine. Right. We fulfilled the ambition to get married. That was a tough one. Right. Uh, we probably want to have a son. Befriend Lord Paramount Eddard. That seems like a good one as well. I think um, have a son seems like our first uh, port of call here. Right, let's see where that goes. Oh, last hearth up here. They're not backing the le uh, they're not backing the Starks. They are, I guess they're they're not again at war with the Starks, so they've just declared neutral. Okay, anyone else declared neutral here? Uh, yeah, down in Dorne we have the uh, vase of declared neutral. Okay. How many men do the Ironborns have, out of curiosity? They have 12,000 versus the Iron Thrones. Uh, 25,000 plus vassals. So yeah, it's probably not going to go very well for them, because pretty much everyone's against them. Okay, that's fine. Uh, some high lordships are being created. A lot of this just starts at the start of the game. It'll do a lot of lordship creation. What have we got here? Oh, we can host a wedding. Oh yes, of course we'll host a wedding. We, we should, yeah. Cost us pretty much all of our money, but it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. The best part about holding a wedding is organizing the whole event. Um, I obviously don't want to spend too much on it, as we don't have too much. Most of the preparations for the wedding have been made. Now I only have to send out the invitations. Who have I invited? My Castellan, my uncle, my wife. Well, you know, if I didn't invite her, it'd be very awkward. Uh, Lord Commander Jorah. Mormont, of course, because he is related to um, my wife. How closely are they related? Alright, so uh, he's her uncle. Okay. Uh, our father-in-law we invited, and our mother-in-law we invited. So not a large uh, wedding, but okay. Reasonable. The fire blasted right past my face, and I felt how my hair started to curl away from the fire. The fire eater had been a bit too careless for my taste, but his troop and he were clearly greatly skilled. Well, I don't have the money to pay them, though too dangerous. I don't want my guests to catch fire. Definitely. The wedding day is upon us. Soon I shall be wed to Mistress Daisy in the sight of all the lords of King's Course. It shall be a glorious ceremony. The guests have finally arrived. All is ready. The servants have worked day and night to prepare and decorate the dance hall. Mistress Daisy's gown is splendid and the castles never looked lovelier. Welcome to the wedding. Everybody who's turned up. Which is everybody we invited. Fantastic. We greet them all. Here I stand before a heart tree of the old gods to take up a solemn vow of marriage with Daisy Mormont. The great lords and ladies of King's Course look on as I drape the arms of House Cassell around my bride to finally seal our marriage. And now for the feast. The feast is winding down and now only the bedding remains. Jorah and Daisy are stripped of all garments by the revelers who make many a body joke along the way. They're then finally bundled into their bedchamber, where they are finally left alone. A fine tradition. Fantastic. The morning after the wedding feast has come and all the lords and ladies are finally making their way home. All agree it was a fine celebration and many predict that the newlyweds will be most content. 
I had great fun and so did everyone else. Everyone leaves the wedding and we are completely bankrupt. However, my study of war has worked out. My intense study of warfare has led to an increased understanding of tactics and strategy. So I have gone from being a dutiful commander to a skilled commander. So another two marshal. We're really getting up there. We're at 19 marshal. I'm surprised we're not... Um, oh, we're a cupbearer of the north. Interesting. We didn't get anything to tell us that, but we're now cupbearer of the north. Surprised we're not a commander, really. Do you think that he'd want us to be uh, leading an army with that? Oh, and fate smiles upon me. My wife, Daisy, is pregnant. Wow, that was quick. Okay, bit of prestige from that. Uh, just trying to see how the war is going. We see where the... Uh, Oh, they've dropped a very small number of men in the Stormlands, but not too much else. Okay, okay. What else have we got here? Oh, so I just see. Oh, they've dropped some men right next to King's Landing here. As you're working, Maester Serian uh, bursts into your study. My lord, you've been up all night again. It would be in your best interest not to work so hard, lest you shall collapse from exhaustion. Um, we heed his advice, we lose diligence, and we start taking it easy, or the realm never rests, so neither shall I. Definitely, the second one. We're only, what, 20 years old? This isn't time to rest yet. Yeah. Oh, there are too many things to do, too many things that worry me, I've gained the stress trait. To be fair, we are at war. That's quite a, you know, common thing to be stressed in war, I would imagine. And we have an heir. We have Desmond Cassell. All we know about him is he's attractive. Okay, what kind of education are we going to give him? Give him one being groomed for rulership, taught uh, by himself, tutored by counsellors, tutored by servants at court. Probably seems like our best one. Or actually, duty seems pretty good. Guards and retainers. Yeah, we give him a duty education. Yeah, sure, he can be called Desmond. That's absolutely fine. And we fulfilled our ambition to have a son. Right, what are we going to do next? You know what? Next, I want to be Master of Arms. Well, do I? Or do I want to befriend my liege? Let's befriend my liege first. Let's show our loyalty and devotion to him. See how that goes. Oh, we're not completely out of money. Fantastic. Smugglers enter domain. You're... Incompetent Castellan has let in a group of smugglers into the county of King's Course. Apparently, he thought they were merchants. What a fool. So the prosperity decreases, and it takes a long time to build anything. Not that we have the money to be getting a building project going, but that's absolutely fine. I do want to have a quick look up here, because apparently the patch of the game we're adding has added some extra provinces up here. It does look like it's all kind of filled in a little bit more. What I would suspect uh, with the starting date that we have is that the White Walkers will eventually arrive. So that'll be interesting. Oh, it looks like the Ironborn are winning currently. Yeah. Apart from the attacker owns all the provinces. If they were to somehow take King's Landing, that would uh, give them the win. But they've won all battles so far. So we'll see how that goes. They won? 100%? What did they do? I'm doing the addition, that doesn't equal 100. Battles. Oh, there we go, the Battle of Flea Bottom, 43% war score. They've won, wait. We won, never mind, I was misreading. I was like, wait a second, how did they win? No, uh, completely the opposite. They lost terribly and very quickly. Yes, of course. Because we are on the side of uh, King Robert. Yes. I don't, I don't know why I made that mistake, but okay. And that is the war over. Bailing Greyjoy has been imprisoned. Master Jory, a great melee in the northern tradition is being held in Castle Serwyn. I urge you to come and take part and prove your prowess in battle. Well, of course, yes. Um, we weren't a commander in the war. We uh, aren't a you know, master of arms or anything. We want to prove our strength and prove that we are not a uh, coward, we're not weak, and we will go and do that next time. Oh, I thought I had the game paused, but okay, we will do this bit first. My lord, news from the Eyrie uh, of a trial by combat. Sir Brynden uh, Tully demanded trial by combat from his capture, Lord Paramount John Aaron, but was slain at the hands of his opponent, Sir Nestor Royce. Oh, wow. Okay, so the Blackfish is dead. He was slain by 
Nestor Royce. That is a very silly hat uh, he has on there, but he is a knight. Let's one have a look at the uh, personal... Okay, but they changed our personal combat skill was calculated. It used to be like a 1 to 20 or something like that. Now it's uh, like... Okay, now it's some other number. So that's 100. So, for instance, ours is 55. And what was the blackfish's? Oh, we can't tell. Because he's dead. So he doesn't have one. Well, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Okay. Well, I am going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to see more of the series, I would really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, uh, any of that sort of stuff, comment. It helps the channel grow. It helps the series grow. And I'm only going to bug you about it in the first episode. So, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.